So, President Biden, I've got his report card. I've got my notes. I took extensive notes during the one hour Q&A with a very timid media. Didn't you think they were a little timid, a little shy? It wasn't quite the same as Donald Trump. Um, So a couple of things struck me. First of all, if you watched the uh, press conference, you saw President Biden came out with a lot of notes. I mean, a big, thick wad of notes. And he actually read the notes during his answer about China because they knew they were going to get a question about China. He read it. And that was pretty unusual. Now, Barack Obama had notes. Trump, I never really noticed any notes. He may have had them, but, you know, Trump, he's going to say whatever came into his mind. But Biden had a big pad of notes. So that was interesting to me. Um, He wandered, you know, wandered all over the place. Um, I didn't really learn anything. Did you? If please do me a favor, two favors. I need two favors from you guys watching and listening tonight. Number one, if I'm unfair to President Biden, please let me know, you know, specifically. That's number one. And number two, if you learned anything from the press conference, I want to know what you learned, all right? Because I'm not arrogant sitting up here saying I know everything. And I want to be fair, above all, to anybody I cover. So um, Joe Biden did use one old trick that's a really interesting trick, and I hadn't seen it um, in a while. But I'll, I'll tell you about that in a moment. So here's my grade to the president on his first press conference, D as in dog, D, all right? I thought he did a terrible job. Why? Because he didn't offer anything specific at all. And he denied that there was a border problem. He actually denied it. So that's pretty interesting. You can create a false world for yourself. You know people like that. I'm sure you do. They don't live in a real world. They live in a world they created. That looks like what's happening to Joe Biden. Now, he lost his train of thought. Well, I'm not going to harp on that. Everybody does it. Um, But he did lose his train of thought a few times where he just lost whatever he wanted to say. He couldn't summon it back. Um, He made it clear that he was elected to solve problems. I'm a problem solver. But he didn't offer one, not one solution to any problem. That was interesting. He said, everyone who comes to this country illegally under the age of 18 will be allowed in. That's a headline. Everyone. I'm not going to throw anybody back under 18. Pretty shocking. But he denied that's a magnet for other people to come. Now, you know, when minors are allowed to stay in the United States, it's only a matter of time before their parents, grandparents, brothers, and sisters will come join them. You know that. Everybody knows that, okay? He's not going to separate families. He did say he's, uh, at this point, wanting to run for re-election. He backtacked that a little bit, but, you know, I don't believe that will happen, by the way. Um, And then uh, he says he's uh, uniting the country. Flat out said, I'm uniting the country. Well, The Republican Congress doesn't like me, but Republican voters, they'd like me because I'm uniting everybody. I said, really? And I'll back everything up with facts. So again, I give the president a D. Now, just for context, I gave President Trump some bad marks uh, in his press conferences, particularly on COVID, when he wandered all over the place and made the press conference all about him, not about the pandemic. I didn't think that was good. And I think that hurt him a lot in his reelection attempt. Um, Barack Obama didn't really hold many of these and he just filibustered all day long. 